Lord willing, you can hear me. It's getting worse and worse. I found a spot where it was quiet, then it starts sprinkling. It's like, man. But all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Akak Badash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Shalom, long salutations to the hopeful elect. Let's fight in the good fight of faith and truth. In sincerity and wholeheartedly, Shalom to the Aqua, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Alright, so Lord willing, we can get through this. It's been, I've been trying to set up for 45 minutes, man. But anyways, you have false prophets out here who is not warning the flock. And you will not get away with continue to keep on, you know, talking about the things that you want to talk about. Which is, I don't want to talk about prophecy. I want to talk about, you know, things that I want to talk about. I want to debate Christians. I want to, um, I want to never talk about the mark of the beast. I want to never talk about Jacob's trouble. Like you have a lot of camps out here who do not go into the warning of the Lord. So, um, Jeremiah, I'm a, I want to do Jeremiah 23. I don't really have nothing in mind. Well, as I was trying to set up for 45 minutes, I'm like, man, what should I speak about today? But false prophets, man. Y'all is not warning the people. Y'all not telling the people. The scripture said, get your house in order. That's talking about you first. Then it said, comfort those as be such as you. So, um, Jeremiah 23 and 1, it said, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. All right? Say up your howl, because you still have Christian pastors out here who definitely ain't telling you nothing. And when I come and set up where I'm at, you got a whole bunch of Jehovah Witnesses out here. So you have a lot of different doctrines, a lot of different um, mindsets and beliefs. And guess what? It just That's why this place is called Babylon the Great, because it's just a gumbo of believing what you want to believe. The truth don't really have power the way that it um, should, but it's about to, okay? Because the scripture says that the truth is in a small sanctuary. I should be a very small sanctuary to wherever they are scattered, um, Ezekiel um, 11 and 16. So we are a very small um, sanctuary. That's why you have more people who will you know, aspire to false doctrine than the real doctrine. Because you have our people who want to hear good news and ain't no good news coming. The best news that you could possibly hear before the trouble come, I mean, um, before is the um, kingdom of heaven. That's the best news that you can get. My mind's a little rattled because like I said, I had a really frustration time of trying to find somewhere to preach. So I'm trying to get back in the spirit. But um, but yeah, so before the uh, the kingdom come, a lot of trouble gotta come, and that's what we're warning you about. And we also telling you to uh, get yourself in order, you know, to, to seek you the Lord while He may be found, before you know the destruction comes. But you want us to tell you that everything is going to be all right. No, everything is not going to be all right. That's why the well in the ancient world the um, the prophets was actually um, reverence. But now, people hate the prophets. So in the beginning, you know, people used to uh, reverence the prophets. They'd be like, all right, prophet, what you, what you got to tell us? You know, now, but as you continue to read the Bible, you start to see that they start putting the prophets to death. Why? Because they're, getting, they're giving messages that they don't want to hear. Matter of fact, maybe remind me of... Um, Isaiah 30 and 9 that this is a rebellious people lying children children who would not hear the law of Yahweh Basham Yahweh so you want to hear everything outside of instruction you don't want to hear the way that you should live your life you are content on the way that you do live your life but then at the same time you think that you're supposed to receive a blessing you're going to be wondering why all these strange things is happening unto you in the very, very near future. You got your Christian pastor telling you, come as you are, the Lord will accept you. And then you got false prophets who just now warning you. And then you even have some uh, false prophets who goes against the 12 tribe sign. So, you know, the Lord talks about um, to, um, matter of fact, let me get it because I don't want to butcher it. Uh, Matthew's 
um, 13 and 12 because what you realize what's been happening, you have people who was once in the truth. It's not just the Boston reprobates. They just the new flavor of the time. But over the years, you have people who started off in the truth and then they got offended or something happened and then they started teaching other things. And the scripture says, Matthew 13 and 12, for whosoever have, to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he had. So over time, the doctrine that you once knew, it start to, to sip away, seep away, little by little, all right? You start teaching hell, you know what I'm saying? You start um, teaching that everybody can make it. You, you stop prophesying, that's what end up happening. So going back to Isaiah 30, 30 and 10, Isaiah 30 and 10, which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things. You don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear that you got to get yourself together, that you got to repent, that you got to follow the ways of the Lord. But you said, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. And even though our people don't say, tell us a lie, but that's what you're saying. When you want us to tell you a lie or, you know, smooth things, everything's going to be all right. You're literally saying, tell us lies. I don't want to hear about trouble. I want to hear about prosperity. Because here's the thing that the devil have done, talk about Esau, Edom. All he have is money and weapons, okay? So this fake money system that we are in, he made you to believe that this paper is God. So, are people do anything to get that paper? You know, us uh, uh, basically sacrifice their morals to get it. They, they, uh, they had killed their mama to get it. So that's what the devil have done. He made money a god in this world. So our people, and really everybody, but this book is for our people. Our people is the main ones that go after covetousness. Because in your spirit, you know that you're a royal people. But you are such in the lowest state, but you never ask why. Then when you hear why, you don't like the answer. Instead of hearing why and say, you know what? Okay, I need to change. But nope. You say that you want to continue to do the things that got you in this predicament in the first place. So, Isaiah 30 and 11. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. I don't want to hear that Bible stuff. Tell me something about getting money. And you know what? That remind me of something. Let me get this real quick. So yeah, because our people don't want to hear nothing about the truth. They don't want to hear nothing about the Bible. And I understand too. I'm a fair man. See, when you come up in Christianity and you start to live life and you start to go through the motions, you start to hear the things that your pastor say, but it never comes to pass. Like prosperity. He tells you that the more that you tithe, the more blessings you're going to get, but you end up more in debt. Then you start looking at your pastor funny. You start realizing that he ride, he ride clean, and you ride in a lemon, all right? A, 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 a vehicle that can get you from A to B. I'm like, man, something ain't right. And then you're wondering why your life is not getting better, but that's all the prop, that's all the pastors teach you is, is prosperity, you know? But you in adversity. So then you then you say, you know what, forget the Bible, right? But it all started with he saw Edom creating the Roman Catholic Church for this age. Because it really started with Jake Constantine the Great. All right? He started to implement Egyptian and Babylonian customs into the truth in the Council of Nicaea. But Esau, since he don't got no culture, he stole everything. And then he brought it over to this age. All right? So the Roman Catholic Church, all these branches that you got, they never teach you the truth. They never go into prophecy. So, so going back, what it says? <laughs> Get you out of the way, turn the side out of the path, cause the, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So you don't want to hear the truth. What I was going to get? I don't even remember. Oh, Lord willing, they come back. So I'm going to read it one more time, maybe they'll come back. So, Isaiah 30 and 11. Get you out of the way and turn aside out of the path. Uh, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. It didn't come back. So I'm going to continue to read. 
Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word. And that's what our people don't want to admit. They act like they're so holy, and they're not. Okay? Because you think because you go to church that you've got some type of spirituality, you don't. And we are in the worst time in history because guess what? Most people are not spiritual at all. Most people don't believe you. Because here's the thing. The main reason why people don't believe in the Lord is because you see all the atrocities that's happening. You see all the death and judgment that's happening. You see all the oppression and injustice happening. So you believe that our oh, God would never allow something to happen. The problem is that you don't know the Lord. And then when somebody tell you the truth of the Lord, you get offended because you've been brought up in lies. You've been indoctrinated in an all-loving God. When the Lord is the total opposite, he's a God of balance, all right? He's a God of balance. As Job told his wife, should you not receive good and not evil from the Lord, you're going to receive both. And then on top of that, what most people don't um, look at themselves and be like, I actually deserve this evil. I'm not right, all right? I haven't repented. I haven't changed my ways because you have to look at it like this. You have somebody telling you to change your way and you looking at it like why are you telling me that? I'm good how I am and that's the problem because I can see if men on the Lord was out here telling you you know shit if you see a bad woman and she got a man go ahead and go ahead and get it because it's about the desires of your heart brother it's about the desires of your heart no we're not we're telling you the total opposite so we're telling you good things that's just one example of many because one thing that run rampant in our uh, in our nation is adultery, man. The f hey, we started with the fall of the woman. Men are still falling to the woman, man. So it says, "You despise this word, trust in oppression. You're not even understanding where you're supposed to be." The Lord said He made the earth for our sakes. We're supposed to be the rulers. Everybody supposed to be coming to us. We ain't supposed to be at the bottom. All right. So just that alone supposed to make you look at the world and wait a minute, I gotta go to work. I gotta punch in the clock. I'm making money, but then before the money even um, get in my hands, they taxing the hell out of me. And then you brought, you you barely making ends meet. Wait a minute, I, I, I'm the children of the Lord and I'm at this position? So you're supposed to look at it and be like, wait a minute, something ain't right. But then if you're okay with that, as the scripture says, you trust in oppression. You trust in oppression because you're not looking at it from a broad scale. See, Esau Edom's a very cunning man, all right? That's why he was able to beguile Eve, and it's not hard to beguile Eve. But the point is that he beguiled most of men of our nation now too. So he's good, that boy good, all right? So Satan is good, and he have a physical counterpart on the earth. It's the wicked that's ruling this world. And the Lord have a physical counterpart, which is the hopeful elect, which I hope to be out here preaching the Lord's message. But you trust in oppression because when you talk to most Jake, most Jake, the ones that I've talked to, because I ask questions to people just to see, you know, and then I like to ask questions because it brings the scriptures to, um, to life. But you would ask, Jake, oh, life ain't that bad. It's okay. What the hell you mean it's not that bad? This life is horrible. Okay? The morals of this place is gone. The oppression is continuing to keep on happening. All right, prices is growing, going up. Food prices going up, your rent going up. But your, but your wages ain't going up. And then if your wages go up, prices gonna go up even more. So like, so the way that you should look at the world, which most people don't, what I realize is that if you don't have the spirit of the Lord, you're not gonna look at the world the way that it's supposed to be looked at. All right, so if the Lord is not dealing with you on the spiritual level with the, um, with the Rakak with Dash, all right? The Holy Spirit, then you're gonna think that this place is okay because guess what? As a man who never, as a man at one point in time who didn't have the Holy Spirit, I looked at this place as it was okay too because I was turning up, I was drinking. I, I never really was a smoker, but I smoked sometimes. But I was always under the influence. And the one thing that I understand why most people drink and smoke, I do. If you're not in the truth, you might as well, because this life is whack. And the reason that people are heavily medicated under, you know, drugs and alcohol is because this life is oppressive and it, it really helps you to get through the day, you know?
so but so the point is, is this you trust and oppress you because you trust your enemy over you the thing that our people do not understand this whole system is built around you being at the bottom systematic oppression systematic racism when it comes to job getting jobs all right last one hired first one fired all right when, when you step into a room everybody already have thoughts about you so this is the world that you live in but this world is supposed to be yours that's why the kingdom of heaven is coming and then the rightful people is going to rule and then the people are going to rejoice but right now the wicked bear rule the people mourn all right so what the hell happened my scriptures disappear. So, hold on. Come on, hurry up. Dang, this acting stupid. So, I'm going to read 12 again. Isaiah 30 and 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word, trust in oppression, and perverseness, and stay thereon. So, you trust in oppression and wickedness. Because the Lord said that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, Job 9, 24, also Psalm 73 and 12, it is the wicked who prosper in this world. They increase in riches. You want to be rich. You looking at the people that are rich. They're wicked. So you thinking that it's okay. See, you think that this truth is about prosperity. You thinking that God is about prosperity. He is, but not right now. We're not in a uh, prosperity position. We are under Esau's blessing, all right? And the Lord is fair. So Esau, he been, he been in rulership for a while. He been in rulership for a while, all right? But he's finally at his end. So while we, you are behind enemy's lines, and that's what you need to understand, and our people don't understand. If it wasn't for the Lord, you would be, you would be through. You would still be in chains in your back with. You still be getting hung from trees. But for prophecy's sake, because he knew that the men of the Lord was going to have to eventually have some uh, freedom to move around and preach. But that's what it's all about. It's all about the elect. Everything is about the elect. All right? So the only reason why you was even able to get out of the fields because of the men of the Lord that was going to preach the word today. But you trust in wickedness and you trust in oppression. You love being extorted. All right? So basically... They use your talents, all right? They never pay you what you really deserve. Now, of course, you're probably looking at it like, wait a minute. Oh, uh, Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics, right? He makes 60 million a year for shooting a basketball. But you have to ask yourself, if you could give a man $60 million to shoot a basketball, how much you think these devils is worth? So you're still a welfare case to them. And another thing, like Apostle Aramlov said, Jake believed that paper money is money. It's not. It's substance, all right? The things that you possess, like land, cattle. Do you have a farm? No, all, all these Jakes that's making millions and millions of dollars, all they have for themselves is cars. They might have a couple houses. That's the most positive thing that you can have, but guess what? If you don't own the land on that house, then guess what? Your house can be taken, it can be knocked down. So say, I'll like, put it like this. If you build a house in a, in, a, in a specific area and the government need this land, he want to build a, um, I don't know, we're going to say a strip club, I don't know. He want to build something there. That house got to go. You can't pick up your house and move it. So guess what? That house got to be uh, demolished. And then the government can just put up whatever he wants. So yeah, Jake, like yeah. So that's why when the money crash and they make it digital, then what? Okay? Then what? That's you trusting in oppression. All right? Being extorted. Matter of fact, let's get this word real quick. Because I always say that. Extortion. So when you go into the word, um, what is that? What I clicked on. I don't know what I clicked on. Oppression is I shock, right? I shock the definition is oppression, extortion, all right? Um, uh, oppression, gained by extortion. So how is it gained by extortion? The scripture says 
If he had need of you, he will use you. So you're being used as lesser illuminaries to push his agenda. You made a covenant with death, but the Lord said in that same chapter, so Isaiah 28, 15, it said that you made a covenant with death. When you jump down to the 18th verse, it said that your covenant of death shall be disannulled. So when the flood do come, you're going to be caught up in it too, because guess what? You're being used. They ex they're exploiting you for your talent, okay? And then they extort you by waving goodies in your face. And then you lose your morals. I want this, so I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it. So now your soul is being had, all right? So that's what our people believe in. And here's the thing. You don't look at it like this. To get where you want to go, you're going to have to compromise your morals. Only if you hit the lottery or something. And how um, how easy is that? How slim of a chance is that? All right? I believe the lottery is unread. It's a tax write-off. That's why I always be old Edomites that be winning it most of the time. You know? They probably know somebody that knows somebody. But the thing is, is that... You know, our people just want to continue to keep on living this life and not understanding that, all right, you're living in a world where you, you ain't even eating real food. The air is toxic. The woman that you had already had, the women that you, the woman that you have most likely had rods before you. So she already has different vibration and different spirit on her. All right? So she's not yours. Then, going back to the food, you are what you eat. Because of the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashan Abishai, we are able to still be here. Because once the Lord uh, revealed to us what we are, what, what we have been eating, oh, that's going to make you want to whoop Esau's eat of ass even more in the kingdom. All right? So the things that is exposed to us, we're like, damn, that's messed up. But wait till the Lord give us all the truth of what this devil really been doing. So all the foods that's in the um all the foods that's in our because you gotta understand, so you have like the cheap stores like Save a Lot, um all these. I mean it's different in every city. But basically, you got all those knockoff grocery stores in the hood. We get the worst meats, the worst vegetables. You know what I'm saying? All of it's GMOs, period. But you got more pesticides in your stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that should anger you, but it don't. That's why the scripture says, surely oppression makes a wise man mad. All right? And the gift destroy up the heart, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. The, the gift that destroy up the heart is that they give you a little bit more food stamps, rock you back to sleep. They give you a couple extra dollars on your um, monthly check from the welfare system, you know, that, that'll rock you back to sleep. Oh, now you'll look at it like, oh, it ain't that bad. All right? The Lord said use the world that is abusing. It's nothing wrong if you get those things. But when you start to depend on it, and when you start to look at this devil like, oh, he cares about me. The scripture says in Job 20 and 10, he shall seek to please the poor. All right? And that whole chapter goes into his destruction. He's going to seek to please the poor. Why? Because it's easier to rock you to sleep that way. And then he can, while he's rocking you to sleep, it's easier to conquer you. You don't have that militant, you know, spirit. Even though the Esau Edom don't care if you get militant, he'll wipe you out. That would give him an excuse. But it's so easy when you're docile. All right? They ain't going to believe anything that we say. Uh, give them this. They'll shut up. All right? You'll start protesting and all of a sudden, they come to your demands. You have 10 demands and they give you one or two demands and now you back happy. 20% of your demands have uh, came to pass and now you back rock to sleep. That's why the Lord said that you are a crouching lion. I mean, uh, a young lion, an old lion. He's gonna, an old lion, he's gonna rouse up that, uh, that young lion, all right? Because what's coming to pass is Israel is going to get that power all right but let's get back to this isaiah 30 and 13 some of us is gonna get that power man lord willing i'm one of them the lord talks about how we're gonna have have our hand around your neck matter of fact let me get that real quick so even the, um the two-thirds gonna be able to get down they're not gonna win but they're gonna be able to uh 
choke the life out of some people. They're going to be able to put people to death because the civil war is coming. Jake is going to get, you know, they're going to get down. They're not prophesying to win, but they're going to get down. It's the same thing that happened in 70 AD. You had, even though they were wicked, well, the two-thirds is wicked. So, yeah, so I, can, I can use the same example. The Sakari, right, who fought against the government. All right, they, they won some skirmishes too, but they eventually got put down. So, um, Psalms 18 and 48, he delivered me from my enemies. Yeah, you lifted me above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Is that it? Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Here we go. It's our, uh, Psalms 18 and 40. You has also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto Yahweh. All right? So guess what? You think these heathens haven't heard the name of Yahweh Shai? They heard the name, but see, they still have a glimpse of hope that maybe the Lord would save me in that time. Maybe the Lord really do love me. Let me try. All right? So they going, while they getting choked out, they're going to be going through all the names. Jehovah, Yeshua, Yahushai, Yahushai. Like, like, that's what's going to be happening. All right? So, it says, they cried, but there was none to save them unto Yahweh, but he answered them not. Wait a minute. Didn't the Lord said in Romans 10 and 12, that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved? But well, wait a minute. But Psalm said that they tried to cry to the Lord, but the Lord didn't hear them. See? That's why you got to know the context. That's why you got to know um, what it's talking about, how there's no difference between a Jew and a Greek. Obviously, if a Greek is an Edomite and a Jew is a so-called black man, that's definitely a difference. All right? But that's a whole other thing. We're about to get back to this. Dang, I only read one scripture out of Jeremiah 23. That's how the spirit goes. But I'm um, going back. Isaiah 30 and 13. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking, who breaking coming suddenly at an instant. Because right now the song place is still song, the government is still in play. You know they're still acting like they got your best interests at heart and that they're going to pr uh, protect you. You know, but the Lord talks about how uh, the, the 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 trust in, in the shadow of Egypt should be your shame. Matter of fact, that's, that's up here in the chat. Matter of fact, let me get it. Isaiah 30 and 3. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Because right now, Esau Edom do have power. He do got strength right now. But if you knew prophecy, if you was looking at it from a prophetical eye, you see that he's losing power. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. You don't look at it that way. You think because you're able to go buy some Jordan steel and baby go to McDonald's that you okay but this place is certainly in the drain all right so now the lord is showing you that 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 you need to cleave on him but you're not so isaiah 30 and 3 therefore shall the strength of pharaoh be your shame and in the trust and the trust in the shadow of egypt your confusion the shadow goes into defense all right so that's going to be your shame now let's get back to uh, jeremiah 23 So woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, saith Yahweh. Therefore thus saith Yahweh, power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Because the Lord uh, rep uh, symbolized this word as food. You're supposed to take, you're supposed to ingest this word and live by it. So when people hear this word, you're supposed to live by it. You're supposed to take this in, right? So woe unto, uh, therefore thus saith the Yahweh power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye, sh ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith Yahweh Bashem Abishai. How do false prophets scatter the flock? Because what ends up happening is that when you don't have the truth and the Holy Spirit is not dwelling upon you, you start to be manipulated by other philosophies. So you already you already don't have the truth, right? So you have a pastor, right? He goes into prosperity. He goes into coming as you are. 
So if you come as you are, that means the next thing that you hear that 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 um that's fixated around your life, then guess what you're gonna do? Oh, I like that philosophy now. Now you in it now you in this different doctrine. The scripture says in um, Ephesians 4 and 14, don't be driven by every wind of doctrine. That's how you scatter the flock. Because you don't have a foundation when you listen to false prophets, okay? When you listen to false prophets, you don't have a foundation. So then you be driven away by whatever makes you feel good. Because you didn't have a foundation in the first place. You didn't have a foundation. You didn't build your foundation upon a rock. All right? You build it upon sand. So you you driven them into this philosophy, that philosophy. So woe unto you that scattered the flock. And it says, and I would gather the remnant out of the flock of all the countries whether I have driven them. That's why the remnant is waking up and all the countries that we've been scattered. All right? Like when you really look at it from, a, um, from a, really the only place that you don't see prophets at is like the Middle East. But you got prophets in Western Europe Eastern Europe, Australia. We got a brother in Australia. Brothers in Australia. You know what I'm saying? Brothers in the UK, Italy. You know, that's Western Europe, Australia, Eastern Europe. Really, the so called Middle East are where, you know, you don't have prophets like that. But you got Israelites there. You know? So, um. So I would get. And I will bring them again to their foes, and they should be fruitful in the creek. So the Lord always prophesied that he was going to gather his elect, bring them back to the land, put them in their rightful order. So that is the promise. But before that promise comes, a lot of bad times are about to come. Okay? And, and, and sorry, but not sorry. All right? Have I became your enemy because I tell you the truth? And the answer is yes. But do I care? No. So, um, Jeremiah 23 and 4. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. That goes into Jeremiah 3 and 15. I will give you pastures according to my heart that shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. All right? Which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, save your how will bosh out shot. When you hear the truth, the truth is actually supposed to give you confidence. All right? The truth is supposed to give you, the truth is supposed to give you confidence, right? Just like you have people jumping back here. See me, I'm standing still. I don't care about no damn gunshot. It's not gunshot, it's that stupid ass car. But the point that I'm making is see the Lord always giving an example. Right? So um you should have seen the people jumping back here. Oh but um but yeah, so the Lord have when when you hear this truth, it's supposed to give you confidence. When you don't hear the truth, it give you it, it makes you shaky. That's why you have some people, matter of fact, you had a leader of a camp of a big camp, the ISPK, the leader of them talk about, oh, you think the Lord gonna care if you take a microchip inside you? That's somebody that's making you shaky because you have an opposition. The opposition is this. You're not supposed to take it, but then you got somebody telling you that, oh, you think the Lord gonna care if you do take it? So now, now you, you, your, your foundation on sin. You ain't, you ain't set it up upon a rock. You unstable. That's why the scripture says, Wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times. So when you hear the truth, it's supposed to give you faith, confidence. When you hear lies, it don't do that. It makes you confused because you always have an opposition of something. So while you hear false prophets, you also hear the real prophets, okay? And you don't know where to stand. So that's why you scatter in the sheep. So it says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. That's talking about Yahweh shot. All right? And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So when the Lord come back, he ain't coming back happy. He coming back with a sword, as the scripture said. He's coming back to deliver his elect and destroy the wicked and the wicked of his people and the nations. All right? In America, ain't nobody going to survive if you're not the elect. Imagine that though. I see all these, like I said, on, on, on a nice day, you will see thousands of people walk out, walk by, right? And none of these people gonna live if they don't repent. You gotta be an Israelite to even repent. All right, so none of these people gonna live. Imagine that. Imagine when you riding in a car or you at work and you looking at these people and none of these people gonna survive. 
that's what you call that's why the scripture says that if he didn't shorten the days there should be no flesh saved man when you read that you got a picture what the lord is talking about if the lord do not shorten the days it will be no flesh saved that means that there's going to be a lot of killing okay so and that's the total opposite of what you ever heard before you think that god about to come back and, uh, and change him god i got a blessing for you that, that that's what that's what you hear when you hear about church okay but no the prophecy is the total opposite jacob's trouble which is the world trouble it's going to be a lot of casualties a lot of death and only the elect going to make it man. so that's why and lord willing i keep this mindset don't have no ties to nobody and nothing in this life because it will become a stumbling block if you have children and a woman you pray for them that's all you can do you can't save yourself you definitely you can save them because the lord said that the believing husband can sanctify the unbelieving wife but that's still up to the lord so all you can do is pray for your family and the lord will do the rest First Peter 5 to 7 it said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Alright? So you can't be worried. You got to keep your eyes single. And you have to worry about you. And the Lord will do the rest. If it's meant for your wife and children to make it, they're going to make it. But you can't force them into the truth. And you can't be worried about it to the point that they become a stumbling block into you. So, a lot of people cared about their job. I'll put it like this, to be fair to the people that took the hokey poke. You was worried about your livelihood and you was uh, worried about your job. The number one is livelihood though. Number two, you have some people who actually love their job, okay? So they was like, nah, I ain't about to lose my job over some damn hokey poke. But see, that was a test that you failed. Because the Lord will always provide. And the Lord said, Godliness with contentment is great gain. So if you had a good job, the Lord could have blessed you with another good job. Alright? That's the power that you serve, but you don't put your faith on the line. All you Christians out there who was campaigning to take the hokey poke. But where the Lord said, shall no evil and no pestilence come near thy dwelling. Alright? So, uh, Psalms 91 and 10. Where was that at? But Christians don't read and they don't know the Bible. All right? Where was sweet Jesus in that time? But Jesus would, in this word, Jesus would tell you to take the hokey poke. You know? But um, Jeremiah 23 and 6. In his day, Judah, uh, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall de dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. All right? Yahweh Tazadah. Alright? So, um, Jeremiah 23 and 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Alright? So, the day is coming, which we are in that day, and that's what we've been prophesying about. We ain't gonna be talking about the deliverance out of Egypt, but we about to be, but Yahweh that liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the North country. What we are in North America, this is the place of the great deliverance. All right? So for the IUIC, the leader Nate, going on, he just want a jet set. He just want to go to this country and that country because he got the money. He's really sightseeing. Talk about, I gotta go wake up everybody. No, you already in Babylon the Great. You ain't waking up nobody. You, you teach Jesus. But but get off of him. I don't even care about him. So the point that I'm making is that this is the place where, where the big deliverer is going to come. Is this the only place? No. Uh, Matthew 24 and 31, I should deliver the elect from the four winds of the earth. But this is the place where the truth came out of. This is the place where the, the, the greatest destruction is going to come. And this is the place where the greatest deliverer is going to come. The Lord is going to make Babylon the Great as an example, as, as he did in Solomon and Gomorrah. This is a, a Solomon and Gomorrah part two. All right? And you can't deny that because you see how this place is ruled by alphabets. And you can't deny Solomon and Gomorrah because you had archaeologists with to go search this out. They found brimstone, which is called sulfur. 
All right, they even lit sulfur on fire and it turned into a black pitch. And anything in the site, it melts. So that's why that whole city was burnt down to the ground and it never rose up again. This is going to be a desert, all right? So you're gonna have the missiles on top of your Yahawashai shooting fire from the chariots, all right? So, but Yahweh liver was brought and led the seed of the house of Israel, not the seeds of the nations, seed, singular, house of Israel, singular, okay? Out of the north country, from all countries, whether I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So that's the promise, okay? The promise is that they're coming, the Lord is going to deliver his elect out of all these lands. We're going to come back to our land and rule. That's going to be the headquarters, but the whole earth is going to be ours, okay? That's the promise. Even two-thirds who we can't stand, some two-thirds I can't stand. Lord willing, I will not be a part of that number. I hope to be part of the elect, you know? But right now, I'm in my right mind. All praises to you. How will Bashi me? I will shout for that. Lord willing, I endure to the end. But I can't stand some Jake, man. But they're going to be in the kingdom. They're not going to be in a, an authoritative um, position. But they will have rulership over the heathen. Okay? Because you're going to be the children of the elect. So LeBron James, Floyd Mayweather, he did it. Jay Z, all of those guys who's rich and was able to, you know, do what they wanted to do for the most part, they're going to be low in the kingdom, okay? But they're still going to be over you, even though. So, um, Jeremiah 23 and 9, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Because you have way more false prophets than real prophets, it's way more lies than truth. Okay? That's why the scripture says this. Wait to this. So, um, Malachi 3 and 17, right? Because like I said, you have way more lies than truth out here. Malachi 3 and 17, and they shall be mine. Let's talk about the elect. Say if Yahweh of hosts. In that day when I make up my Jews, the body, all right, the precious stones, I will spare them as a man spared his own son and, son, and, and his son served them. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked and between him that serve the most high and him that serve him not so that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to be able to discern who serve the most high and who serve them not and guess what most people can't discern that because you need the holy spirit to spiritually discern the scripture says that spiritual discernment you know unto the natural man is foolishness unto him okay so, when we talk about the things that we talk about, it's like we're speaking a foreign language to you, like it's rocket science. You can't get it, because the Lord has blinded you. Your spirit ain't right. You, you don't got the ears to hear, all right? So, that's why the Lord said in 2nd Edwards 9 and 21, let the uh, multitude perish then, which was born in vain, but let my great be kept, all right? So, a lot of people is going to die. Scripture says it be many more of them that perish, which them that shall be saved. That's some second Edges 13 and 15. Alright? No, second Edges 9 and 13. Matter of fact, let me see if I'm right. I was right. But I'm gonna read it anyway. Uh, second address 9 and 13 therefore be not thou not curious how the ungodly should be punished and when yeah. worry about yourself yeah. all right like people have a problem with the men on the lord we are the defense of the gospel so we have apostles and elders who rebuke false teachers that's in our spirit to do that 
We don't like. The Lord said that we hate every false way. That's in Psalms 119. And I want to say like 104 or 100. Maybe 105. But, therefore, he said, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Yep, uh, Psalms, 10, Psalms 119 and 4. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So we hate every false way. If you don't like to rebuke it, then obviously you you uh, uh, ascribe to what they're saying. Oh, it's not that bad. No, that's very bad because they're leading a flock astray. They're teaching you things that's going to get you put to death. Okay? So going back, so be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. Okay? So, we have to worry about ourselves and those who be like you. The Lord told Ezra that in the chapter before this, in um, 2 Ezra 8. Because we are compassionate people. Hell yeah, we want our family to be saved. But then when you really look at them, do you really? These, these, your family wicked. If they don't repent. If they heard the truth and say, you know what, I still want to do what I want to do. You want to call me. Uh, they don't even they don't even be like, you know what? Ray, Ray have changed his life. No, they'll look at you and be like, oh, you ain't the same no more, man. What's wrong with you? You born. That, that's the kind of stuff that they say to you because they're wicked. All right? So, yeah. So, at the end of the day, worry about those who are like you and yourself. The answer, then answer I and said, I have said before and now do speak. And I will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. All right? So, that is just the conclusion of the matter. So a lot of people are going to die, man. So going back to... Um, I don't know why I do that now. You go into another tab, all of a sudden now, I go into another tab, and then I come back to the other tab, and then the tab disappears. Man, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, Jeremiah 23 and 9. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine have overcome because of Yahweh and because of the words of his holiness. Because once you start to look at the, the overall conclusion of our people, it really do, you know, makes you sad sometimes. Like, man, Jacob's through. You know what I'm saying? Then you hear the words of the Lord about the destruction that he's going to bring upon his people. And then you still are, you can still be destroyed with them if you, you know, return back to your bond. And, and the truth is scary because you don't pick the Lord. The Lord picked you. You don't endure to the end. The Lord give you the spirit to endure to the end, but you don't know if you're going to endure to the end. That's what keeps you humble, though. That's why the Lord did it that way, to keep you humble. That's why the Lord, you would have like a smooth, I mean, I don't really have that smooth, that much of a smooth time, but just for the sake of making a point, you might have a time where it's smooth, all right, and then boom, something will happen, and it will humble you. Thinking that you have things under control, you might meditate on how I'm gonna move, what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said that. Uh, don't worry about tomorrow, but get through today. For today, have um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. In fact, let me see if I can find it. Matthew uh, six and thirty-four. It said, "Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow." Because, you know, sometimes you try to be like, all right, you try to basically blueprint your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because I try to keep it uh, as structured as possible. Like praying, reading, and when to do a video because, you know, life happens. You got you to gotta find time for the Lord, man. All right? So I try to structure it, and it's okay. But when you start talking about next week, I'm going I'm to I'm do this. Or couple days from now I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna have a mindset so I'm gonna structure my mindset around this the Lord will throw a monkey wrench up in there man 
he'll throw a fork up in there and then you're like, damn, man. I could not get ahead. The Lord said you got to go through that straight gate, man. Ain't no escape. But the straight gate is what keeps you humble. Because if, if we was preaching the truth and our life was just smooth sailing, you will start to get proud. It, it, and you will probably get to the point where you don't even, uh, damn, this nigga high on heroin or something? He's a dude like this. He's about to fall over. But anyways, you, and you might even stop preaching the truth. You're like, shit, I know I'm the elect. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Matthew 6, 34, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right? For tomorrow shall take the, take thought for the things of itself. So, every day is, is, is a new adventure, man. Jeremiah 23 and 10, For the land is full of adulterers, Physical adulterers and spiritual adulterers. For, for because of swearing, the land mourneth, because we broke the covenant. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. All right, we in Babylon the Great, in ancient Babylon, what happened? The, the, the temple got destroyed. We got besieged. All right, it was, it was uh, cannibalism, famine. You know what I'm saying? And they destroyed a lot of us. And that's the same thing that's gonna come back, but a hundred times worse. All right? For both, for both prophet and priest and profane are profane. Yeah, in my house I have found their wickedness, if you have a So you got a lot of people, you know, who, who, who call themselves prophets, who call themselves a priest, but they wicked as all hell. They ain't teach you the truth. They ain't teaching you the truth. They teaching you lies. All right, and it says, "Wherefore their way shall be unto them as the slippery ways in the darkness." So that's you groping at noonday. So when these things start to come to pass, you never taught them. You never warned the people of it. So guess what? Since you didn't warn the people. You gonna get caught up in it. Matter of fact, I think it actually says that in another chapter. Say Jeremiah 14. Let me see. Yep. Jeremiah 14 and 13. Then said I, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword. Because when you don't speak on it, that's literally what you're saying. Alright? Neither shall you have famine. They don't prophesy about famine. So that means that they're saying that it ain't gonna be a famine. But I would give you a short piece of this place. Because if you're not prophesying about the sword and the famine and the pestilence, then obviously when you preach it to them, you pre you prophesying unto them peace. And that's not the case. Jeremiah 14 and 14, Then Yahweh said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I, I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. The Lord ain't dealing with you. He ain't give you the spirit of truth. Otherwise, you'll be prophesying about it. All right? But you... Got out there, put a garment on. Sometimes you don't put a... You got people who don't even got garments no more. They took the garments off. They just out there with a t-shirt on talking. All right? Talking about nothing. All right? So it says, That I have commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesied to you a false vision, and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. All right? Hell. You're going to burn in hell forever. Okay. So what is the conclusion of that? Are you trying to scare people into joining your congregation or something? I mean, what, what, I don't get, I don't understand the hell part. So, but that that that's circling back around, and as the apostle said, that 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 happened back in one west, but then it got cut, and then also something when it comes to um, 2007, right? When the when the ministry happened, and um on YouTube in those early years. Hell was being taught. Then guess what? It got swept away. Now we back at it again. So that's literally a spirit. All right? That's a spirit that keep coming back. And a lot of people get swept away by it. Uh, Jeremiah 14 and 15, it said, Thus saith Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. 
See? You don't want to teach about it, you will get caught up in it. You will get caught up in it, period, because you ain't teaching the truth. All right? So, uh, Jeremiah 23 and 12. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as the slippery ways in the darkness. They should be driven on and farther on, for I will bring upon them even the year of their visitation, Savior Yahweh Bashem Abishai, in the later time, all right, which is now. This is in 500 BC around that time, all right, that, that Jeremiah is prophesying. So this is 2,500 years later. So the visitation, Savior Yahweh, I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. That's talking about the northern kingdom. Okay? They prophesy in Baal and cause my people to err. And one thing about that's why the scripture says in um, Hosea 4 17, leave Ephraim alone, for they are joined unto idols. One thing about the northern kingdom, and I ain't gonna lie, it, Northern Kingdom, when it comes to Jesus, Jesus, they love that man. But Jake do too, some of them do too. But I will say Jake. What they'll do, they they just give Jesus a team, all right. But the north of the kingdom, the hell no, they you know what I'm saying. But so for the most part, when it comes to um, Ephraim, you know, they love them some, um, some some Jesus, all right. That and which is the modern day for all. And I have and I have seen prophet, I have seen Paulian prophets of Samaria. They prophesied for all and they caused my people to err. I have seen also. In the prophets of Jerusalem, a horrible thing, they commit adultery, they walk in lies, they strengthen also the hands of the evildoers because when you're not teaching the people the truth, you strengthen in their hands to do evil. That's why the Lord said, uh, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? You have also taught the wicked ones your ways. So you make the people that's hearing you the twofold child of hell worse than what they were before they even came unto you. They already was in a bad state. And then you brought them into your so-called truth and made them into a worse state. So, it said, strengthen the hands of the evildoers that none do return from their wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, because the word Sodom means burning. And that just means burning in your lust. Of course, towards one another, same sex, bestiality, all of that stuff. But Sodom don't got nothing, it ain't just homosexuality, all right? It's just basically just being indulged in lust, okay? And in this world, that's what they teach you. Go after what's, whatever your heart desire, go after it, all right? Don't matter if it's de detrimental to you. If it feels good to you, it's okay. That's what this world teaches you, okay? So, it says, they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of there of Gomorrah. And they, that, you're gonna be destroyed. That's why Isaiah 1 and 9, it says that if if, uh, if the elect wasn't as, matter of fact, well, I understand why I don't know that scripture. I know that by heart, but not today. Um, Isaiah 1 and 9, except the how of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been as Gomorrah. So the remnant is what's going to preserve the rest of Israel, man. That's why the remnant is important and that's why you're going to learn to love the remnant. You hate them now. You're not recognizing this labor of love. Because guess what? You are going to get destroyed if you don't aspire to this truth and, and, and walk in it. But the ones you're actually teaching the truth, those are the ones that's going to save you. So you're going to learn to love them. All right? You're going to be happy in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord said that some of you are going to loathe yourself, though. So when you come back as a baby and you grow up, you're just going to have your head down because the Lord is going to show you, you know, your wickedness. But remember, the kingdom of heaven is still for the Israelites. So however alone the Lord wants you to feel sad about yourself, but the Lord is not going to have that last forever. Because remember, the scriptures in Psalms 136, every scripture said his mercy endure forever. All right? So yes, you're going to be in the kingdom with your head down for however long the Lord wants you. But then eventually, you're going to snap out of it, and then you're going to be able to enjoy the kingdom. And that's what you call mercy, because you have some Jake who really is just, as the scripture says in Jeremiah 5 and 25, I think, 
or five and twenty three or five and twenty six. It said that you have compete, you have compassed that these are the wicked. It might be Jeremiah five and twenty eight. All right, but you have compassed that these are the wicked. You have Israelites who are more wicked than the wicked, man. So therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. All right, so it's going to be nothing but bitterness unto you that's coming. You're not going to be able, remember the scripture says that my people should eat and drink, but you should be uh, vexed and how for vexation of spirit, man. So that's bitterness. And it says, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profanest go forth into all the land. All right. So you, all you false prophets out there, you are going to get it. You are going to get it because you do not want to teach the truth. You do not want to warn our people about the things to come. So you're going to get caught up in all the things that you don't prophesy about. All right. You ain't even talking about how Daniel's going, how bad it's going to get. Daniel's 12 and 1 say that Michael the Archangel is going to have to step in. A literal angel is going to have to come down here and fight for us. That's how bad it's going to get. All right. You thought uh, 70 AD was bad. We got uh, besieged. All right. Cannibalism. We had each of the children, leather belts, leaf off of trees. It's going to get worse than that. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah 23 and 16 Thus saith Yahweh of hosts Hearken not unto the words of the prophets That prophesy unto you They make you vain And that's true Because when you make something vain You make something um, worthless Okay They're making you worthless because They're not even warning you All they're telling you is wear your fringes That's it The fringes was for you to look down But really the origin of the fringes is that a man picked up a stick on the Sabbath day. All right, so you ain't supposed to work in the Sabbath day, right? So when you wear fringes down there, it makes you remember the law. So you're telling people to wear fringes, but they're breaking the law. Lined up, all right? They're not teaching the truth. You know what I'm saying? So the fringes is supposed to make you remember the law. So you got camps, they uh, make merchandise off of the people. They make all these fancy garments with, um, you know, with the fringes on it and then say, oh, $70 here, $30 here. You know, oh, you gotta wear this specific um, garment. You know, so they make it merchandise to the people. What you, how should I do? All right, you start kicking ass in the temple, man. Then you ain't gonna make my uh, father's house a, uh, a den of thieves. So, you know, Let me see where my battery is. Ended on this. Second Ezra 16 and 17. Things that prophets should be prophesying about. Warning the people. Woe is me, woe is me, who should deliver me in those days? Talking about the days that's coming. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. You got people who do not understand that sorrows is coming. Mornings is coming. Because your teacher don't teach you these things. And then, as we read earlier, prophesied to me smooth things, prophesied deceits. You hoping that what we're reading is not true. But it's stupid because, so you're going to skip over all the doom and gloom scriptures and then believe on everything else. You, if you're supposed to believe in all the book, the Lord is not the author of the people. All right, so it says, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars, ain't we in the beginning of wars, the rumors of wars? Uh, 
uh, NATO uh, threatening Russia, Russia threatening NATO and the United States, talking about we'll use nuclear on you, all right? And the power shall stand in fear be, be, at the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Now we know what to do. Ezra, if he's here, knows what to do. Well, according to the scripture, he is here. So he knows what to do. All right? But then again, something tell me that Ezra is King David in the reincarnation, but that I'm speaking as a man. But um, so it says, Behold, famine and behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for an enemy. So right, so the Lord is having these things happen because as I say in the chapter before, second Ezra 15 and 5. Matter of fact, let's get to that. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So the reason why the Lord is going to allow destruction to happen is because your wickedness is fulfilled. The Lord is at the the Lord is getting to the boiling point. All right, there's still more atrocities that's got to happen. You know, before the Lord just have, allow this devil to come down with great wrath. But the lead up to it, it's going to be a lot of mourning. It's the beginning of mourning and great death. The beginning of affliction and sorrow, man. Famine, the sword. So these things are going to happen. So you need to gird up your mind. So, you know, woe until you fall from. The Lord's going to have, matter of fact, I'm going to end it on this. First Peter 4 and 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High first, the ones who call themselves Israelites, all right? And if it first begin at us, what shall, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? All right, because you got to understand, when it said that it must start about at the house first, that's talking about us, all right? The ones who know the truth, the ones who aspire to the truth, the ones who call themselves Israelites. But that's talking about all the Israelites. That, 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 that call themselves Israelites, right? But then you have the false prophets within that. So it says, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? You're not preaching the truth, right? And if the righteous is scarcely be saved by the skin and our teeth, right? What shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? And that's straight destruction, all right? And it said, wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of the Most High commit the keeping of their souls to him and well doing as a as unto a faithful creator. So we're gonna stand still for the name of the Lord, Lord willing. We endure to the end, man. But you false prophets out there, if we're gonna scarcely be saved, you got no chance in hell, false prophets, unbelievers of our people. Alright? So all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Dash, double honors to the apostles of the Great Millstone, Shalawan to the hopeful elect which I hope to be. Bob, 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 B